Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I am Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys and today I'm going to be talking about Best Day Ever by Cara Ruda. Um, the reason this book had me hum in the Jaws theme song at the beginning is because it is filled with a kind of unknowable dread that I absolutely love in a book. This book is I would call a definite thriller, maybe a bit of a psychological thriller. Um, and it's an absolutely fun read. It's a quick read. It's a light read. I was done this book in about a day and a half, which is very quick for me, um, because you can't put it down. Um, the beginning gets off to a bit of a slow start, but once she clicks it into high gear, we go full blown, full fledge ahead, nonstop wild ride. And it's wild. <laughs> so the story is about Paul and Mia their husband and wife, and let me tell you, they have the perfect life. Paul has a big time job at an advertising agency. They've got the big house. He's got the perfect wife. They've got the beautiful kids, the fancy car, everything that you could hope for. Um, and it's been a while since they've really gotten to spend some time together. Mia's been feeling a little bit under the weather lately. And, you know, Paul's just been so busy and they just haven't taken time out for themselves. And so Paul decides that he's going to plan the perfect weekend getaway. He is going to take Mia, he's going to drive her out to their lake home, and they are going to have the best day ever. So the first bit of the book takes place in a car while they are driving. Um, the story is told from Paul's point of view and we're listening to him think while they're in the car basically every so often they they have a conversation but mostly we're hearing what's going on inside paul's head and that's how we're learning about all of these perfect wonderful things that are in his life all of the successes that he's had and you're kind of like okay <laughs> seems a bit much there paul <laughs> And as the conversations between him and Mia start to happen, you start to feel that something's a little off. The conversations that he's having with his wife versus the thoughts about his life that we're hearing in his head, they don't quite line up. We're not sure what's wrong. We're not sure what's off, but we know something is off. And like Paul is pumped and Mia, she's not quite giving the same reaction that were everything Paul's saying true, she'd be having. So at one point she mentions that she needs to use the washroom and in Paul's mind, he's kind of like, oh, of course she does. And we know, Paul tells us that he doesn't normally like stopping. It's not that long of a drive. He likes to get in the car and go. They can stop when they get there, but you know, it's, it's the best day ever. Um, so Paul decides he's going to be a real champ and he's going to pull over and let her use the washroom. <laughs> so um, that happens. They get back on the road and they get out to the lake house and we pull in and we, you know, he's describing all the houses and the people that live in them. Uh, one of their neighbors here at the lake house is also their neighbor back home where they where they live. I believe this takes place in Ohio. Um, and we know that Paul doesn't think a whole lot about his neighbors. He thinks he's a lot, and I mean a lot, better than them. Um, and he likes to feel as if the image he is projecting is a lot better than them. You know, that's kind of his goal in life. So we get out to the cottage and um, as they pull up and they walk in, there's a neighbor in the backyard and Paul's not sure about this guy. He's a single man. He lives out at the lake all year round and Paul's like, what kind of man does that? 
so all that alone kind of sets him off. And, <clears throat> um, you know, Paul's just kind of like, wait, I need to get this guy out of here. Like, this is the night for me and my wife. We are going out to dinner. We are having the best time, the best day ever. So the more that Mia speaks to Paul, the more we realize what we're dealing with here is an incredibly unreliable narrator. And let me tell you, friends, those are my favorite kind of narrators. I love when you're being told a story and you can't believe a thing that you're being told. And that is definitely the case in The Best Day Ever. So as Mia's saying things to Paul, and we're kind of reacting to them by how different they are than what Paul's telling us, everything starts to unravel. We realize that this big time job that Paul's always talking about, well, he recently got fired for sexual harassment, for making another woman in the office so wildly uncomfortable that they fired him. They gave him a warning. Um, he didn't heed it and then they fired him because he was making her so uncomfortable by constantly asking her out trying to get her to spend time with him and she's like you're married i'm not interested but he just would not give up so we find out that mia knows he's been fired <laughs> and he's just sort of playing it off like listen listen here little sister <laughs> there is you're overreacting. Like, that job's beneath me. I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to worry. Because, of course, Mia's a... She's a stay-at-home mom for their sons. Um, though when he met her, she was a part of the company that he recently got fired from. But when they got married, he said, No, no, no. You go and take care of the family, and I will take care of business. <laughs> so uh, that's what happened. And so now she's talking about how she had been talking to one of the partners from the company and who now works elsewhere who, because Paul um, took his job years ago. And so the guy got fired and left. And then um, Mia's always kept in contact with him because he worked there when she worked there. And, and now they're kind of, you know, he's like, you can come work for me if you like. And Paul's like, no, nope, that's not happening. Like, you belong at home. I don't want you going anywhere, basically. So we get this really unsettling, controlling vibe from Paul at this point. How he doesn't want her out in the world being independent. He doesn't want this. He doesn't want that. He's lying about his job. And Mia is, we're wondering, we're, we're desperately wondering what's going on in her head. What's all that she knows? But of course, the story's told from Paul's point of view. And so basically from there, a good chunk of the story comes comes from the unraveling of the lies and letting us know what's real and what's fake. And as we learn more about Mia and Paul and the real Paul, it just snowballs, it goes hard, it gets huge, and then it explodes. And it's such a fun story. Kara is a, a great writer. She's She writes in a way that's friendly and easy to read. You know, some books are just, they're harder to get through than others, and this is an incredibly easy one. And if you love thrillers, I definitely recommend it. Now, <laughs> you know what's coming next. For anyone who knows they're not going to read the book, but wants to find out what the heck's been going on, I'm going to tell you. So if you do not wish to know, if you do not want spoilers, this is your warning. Click off the video now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. You ready? <clears throat> so we find out that the reason Mia hasn't been feeling so great is because Paul has been poisoning her. The best day ever is Paul's day when he can finally get her isolated and kill her. We learn that Paul has had many relationships. He is a womanizer, like um, extramarital relationships. He's a total womanizer. He's completely psychotic. <laughs> and he's now trying to poison his wife. For a long time, he used to say to his mistresses, you know, I love my wife. I just have needs. That's what you are. 
Um, don't ever expect me to leave my wife, but now he is stepping it up and he is getting ready to murder her. But what Paul doesn't know is that Mia knows this. Mia has found this out. She has um, this neighbor that was at the house when they first arrived. He's been helping her. And, um, you know, when she told him of his symptoms, he had the suspicion that it might be arsenic poisoning. And that's a very difficult poisoning to pick up, I guess, through medical tests. But there's a special test, I think it's a urine test, he says, that they can pick it up on. And they send it, they sent her for this test and they find out that that's what she's dealing with. And they put this plan into motion. Um, the plan to get Peter away from the children, so their two sons, to get him away, keep him with the babysitter. The babysitter will remove the children from the house. Um, Mia's family are helping to get all of her things removed from the house. Mia comes from a lot of money, so a lot of things in their home were, you know, a priceless, art pieces and things that were hers so they come and they remove everything um meanwhile Paul and Mia are up at the cabin and everything is just going crazy and so at one point during the evening this man comes back the neighbor man comes back to the house while Paul and Mia are there and this throws Paul into a tailspin like he is so mad he's like this is our night why are you doing here? And he starts to suspect me of having an affair. Um, and then it just, there's a bit of violence. Paul kind of knocks um, the other man out, whose name I can't remember for some reason. Paul just kind of knocks him out. And then they, Paul takes off. He's like, you know what? Screw you. Screw these guys. I'm going to go get my kids. And we're going to start over again. And that's when he finds out that his children are gone and he is upset. Now one thing I didn't quite understand is Paul takes off he's like okay fine they're gone I'm just gonna go start over and he goes he moves to Florida and um, you know the police are keeping an eye on him to make sure that you know if he ever gets in another relationship they can kind of step in but I never understood why he wasn't like arrested and charged and, you know trying to poison someone that's pretty major anyway it's a really fun read, so I definitely recommend it. Um, before I go, I want to give one shout out to an awesome channel that I've been loving for, I don't know, a year or more. And that channel is Liz with my fam bam. She does vlogs, she does hauls, she's such a sweet, supportive woman. And if you love those kind of videos, definitely go and check her out. And when you do, let her know I sent you. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.